I'm talking to Lewis Kakodi of Synergy. Hey, Dick. Great to talk to you, as always. Synergy, you're probably one of the leaders in software-defined television. Um, what, what does that mean, and, and how does it fit into the current trends in technology? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic term, and the, the credit has to go to my boss for cooking that one up. And, and it, it does actually sum up really nicely in three words what we do at Synergy. So we really want to be able to take a customer and say, grab a pile of computers, either in, in your premise or in the cloud, and don't think about what you're going to do with them from day one. Think about what do you need them to do today, and then apply the software you need and the configuration you need there and then to get that working. Uh, so for me, software-defined technology is absolutely about having a generic IT platform and then switching around for whatever you need for the given circumstance at a given day. Uh, and preferably as well, like working to actually make that as automatable as possible. So you can literally kind of press a button uh, and scripts will run, software will roll out, configurations will change, uh, and all of a sudden a fleet of 10 machines have switched from ingest to play out. You uttered the C word in that last answer. You talked about the cloud. <laughs> Is the cloud the solution? Is it vague and cloud-like, or does the answer lie somewhere between the two? Yeah, I mean, some people would like you to believe that no matter what the question is, the answer will be the cloud. Uh, and it, it would be fantastic. My life would be a lot easier if I could just go all cloud, because then I can actually take a whole pile of shortcuts. But unfortunately, life isn't simple, and we need to be able to deliver on-premise solutions as well as cloud-based solutions, because customers have diverse needs. Not everyone on earth has a gigabit link to the internet. Not everyone on earth has the regula regulatory regime that can allow them to do that, uh, or has the appropriate, even from the big guys, data centers in their region. Uh, if you're trying to roll an OB truck into the middle of a field and do something, the cloud, you know, you'll get the, you'll get the clouds you don't want rather than the clouds you do <laughs> want raining on your satellite. So uh, we're under no illusions that the, the, there is one magical answer to everything at Synergy. So that for us, again, that software-defined technology, it's all about we're assuming there are units of computing power on your premise somewhere, and actually we don't mind where it is. We'll try and serve you in whatever way you need. Uh, but yeah, I mean, on reflection, my life would be so much easier if it could all just be cloud, but <laughs> I live in the real world and it doesn't. So we've got some fantastic solutions if you can use it, but at the end of the day, not everything is a nail and you can't hit everything with that hammer. Yeah. You're sort of suggesting that um we've got to the point where we can divide computing power and software and the software drives the solution. The computing power is wherever it's most convenient. Yeah, and we've reached the point now where the computing power can be so overwhelmingly more capable than the demands of the even broadcast and HD and 4K and 8K are putting on it, that it, it, specialism is no longer required. Uh, and once you reach over that limit, uh, it starts to change the way with which you can engage with complex systems. And an individual point solution, you know, you can still find bespoke hardware is an excellent solution to problems. But once you scale beyond a certain size and you need adaptability and you don't want to make a five-year investment plan, uh, the, the, the flexibility of having generic IT and then uh, doing what you need with it on top of that starts to become much more of a, a safer business case bet. Uh, and with the, the rise of GPUs and the bandwidth and capability of them, you get nearly ASIC FPGA performance from these generic compute units that are still running in a, a quite tight power envelope. So you're no longer thinking, gosh, well, I could do it in a computer, but it would need like a room full of computers to achieve one signal. Uh, now, when we run uh, channels in the cloud, we're using a quarter of a machine for a virtual machine, and we'll stick eight, uh, six HD channels on it. So we really, you know, that density is up there to the point where you start to see that magnitude change and, that, uh, and you can make that shift to be, yeah, actually I can show up at a trade show with just a laptop and demonstrate everything that traditional gear would still be half a rack to do. You made a very important point there that um, we can now start thinking really sensibly in environmental terms. We can think about power consumption mm. because we can tune virtual machines running on a small number of processors. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you've got, you've got different environmental factors that come into play. You've got the cost to actually run it and cool it. Uh, but then you've also got the cost to manufacture it as well. So one of the best things you can do uh, to increase the uh, environmental, decrease the environmental footprint from this stuff is to make sure that all the energy that got put into building that piece of equipment uh, means it gets high utilization. So if you need ingest for four hours a day and play out for three hours a day, 
you want something that can be repurposed and transcoded for three hours uh, so that you can avoid like buying and building and, and forging from ore this kit. Uh, so you, you know, there's actually a, a, a really good environmental argument to be made for making sure that you've got multi-purpose equipment. Uh, then you've also got the how, how many frames can I serve through that for a given watt. So making efficient choices uh, in that case is also uh, a big factor in terms of making sure while it's running it's using an efficient path and not just heating up a room. And then the, the single biggest thing you can then do as well to uh, make sure that the environmental impact is respected is turn it off if you're not using it. Uh, and that's one of those things, you know, you look in equipment rooms and rack rooms, stuff will just be on 24-7 for the two-hour football task it does in there in that highly specialised purpose. You know, using virtual machines in the public cloud when you're getting billed for that, you turn it off and you save money. People turn it off. Uh, you know, when it was some rack uh, equipment, people were like, oh, I, I, I want to trust it'll be there when I bring it back up. So in an IT environment, it starts to become a different perspective in there. And so for the customer that's genuinely concerned about the carbon footprint, uh, not just from a, a price point of view, but in terms of that uh, environmental impact study, there's some really interesting questions that can be asked and now answered with the kind of solutions that we've got. And you are delivering these solutions in the real world. Um, why do people come to you? So uh, I th my boss reminded me of this just the other day, which is, as far as he could see, we're still the only people that let you go to a website and click download a copy of Synergy Air, multi-viewer, capture, and try it. Uh, so there's still a huge amount of legacy in this industry where people expect you to have a handheld situation with a sales guy that's like, oh, I'll loan you something, I'll ship it to you, you know, or you can do some secret shake, uh, handshake, and uh, then you can get access to something with an NDA to try that software. Uh, and so we have found a lot of customers come to us because we make it quite easy to discover. I mean, it's painful at the same time because it means that competitors can come and download our software and, and take a look at it. And, and so we're quite open. But at the same time, that kind of keeps you honest uh, and it keeps you pushing as hard as you can forwards. So we have seen customers that have de gone down that trial route, you know, sat quietly on a Sunday afternoon at home. Like I might be thinking, oh, I'm going to research something. And when you can find all the answers and the trial version, that opens that door up in a way that having to have a, a customer contact through a sales process and then uh, like arranging loans and trials and RFPs and so on, you know, that's quite painful. So uh, I think that's one of the big differences for us and that's how a lot of people have arrived at us and have stayed with us. We kind of wear our heart on our sleeve as it were. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Dick.